So today's video is going to be explaining an oil system and how it works. This is a standard centrifugal non-filtered separator. Okay. So at this chain, most of the separators you're going to see are non-filtered. So all you're going to have in the bottom of this is a float. Now the oil float's purpose is the float is going to sit like this, and when this separator fills up with oil, that float is going to rise. Okay, and when that float rises, it's going to send oil through your oil filter and then up into the top of your oil reservoir. Okay, and then when your oil reservoir is going to have oil going into it consistently, then oil is going to drain out the bottom of your reservoir and go down your oil line. Now, your oil reservoir is going to have an OCV on the top of it, which is going to give you between 20 and 30 PSI plus over your suction. So whatever your suction pressure is, you typically want your oil pressure 20 to 30 PSI higher. And you can check that on your oil line to confirm that it is indeed higher. You can check that off of the bottom of your reservoir or on the line if you have a gauge hookup, a service port. Now, that oil line is then going to go into your compressors. This is a low pressure oil system. So you're not going to have any oil pressure differential valves. It's just going to be a straight oil feed line right into your oil pot. Okay? And that oil pot is right here. And this is also going to have an adjustment on the top. Now, these come factory set. So definitely, this is going to be the last thing that you want to look at in terms of oil problems on your rack. Now, you can see the oil level through the sight glass. This oil pot specifically is half full. The best uh, amount of oil to have normally in an oil pot is a quarter to a third. But if you have a half and it's not causing issues, I wouldn't worry too much into it. Um, but you always want to make sure that you have proper oil flow going to your oil pot before you start adjusting. Because you want to make sure off the bottom of your separator that this line is indeed warm or hot going through your filter. Now, always change your filters regularly. And then also you want to make sure that if you're not getting proper oil flow, you might have to clean your separator flow as well. And then make sure that you also have enough oil in the system. We have just below one ball. You want to always have at least one ball on every system if possible. So if all that is working and you still don't have proper oil flow going into your compressor, um, then you can look into your oil pot as the absolute last thing. So now if your oil system's working perfectly fine and you get to your oil pot now and you have proper pressure going through your oil pot into the compressor, you want to check your oil pump. So this port right here is going to be the port for your oil pump on your compressor. You want 20 to 30 PSI of net oil pressure on your compressor. So what that means is whatever your suction pressure is, you want your oil pressure to be 20 or 30 PSI higher. And you can check that right here. Now, if you might see 15 PSI, you might see 17, you might see 20 or above, but if you're looking at like 10 PSI or less, I would be willing to say that your oil pump on your compressor is probably bad. Now, some vendors, some chains will tell you that they want to go ahead and change oil pumps solely on a compressor. Um, in my experience, I've heard a lot of bad things about just changing oil pumps, and that, especially on you know, uh, compound remanufactured compressors, it's you're, you're better off just to do the whole entire compressor. So, if this does indeed fail where your oil pump is not working right, you should just go ahead and replace the compressor. But that's chain to chain. So, Means might tell you to replace just the pump, some might tell you just to change the compressor. So that's how an oil system works. Things to look for.